What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, a lot of news that just came out. Uh, before we get into that, though, uh, I just want to sort of get an update on the Batman. Brian, you've seen it three times. First of all, what was it like seeing it a third time and not, you know, because I saw it like back to back and then I waited a week and I watched it again. And I still loved it. I still thought it was great to watch. Um, I, I enjoyed it as, mu as much as I saw it the second time. So I enjoyed it the second and third time. How did you uh, receive it on a third viewing? Yeah, I think it ages. I think it ages well. Uh, I think it's highly rewatchable. Like, I think this is a movie that when it comes on TV, it's going to get edited down even further just because it is so long and they've got to get the commercials in. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's one of those things where you can really isolate pieces of the movie. And if it's on TV, you'll kind of sit there for five minutes to see the car chase. So you'll sit there to see the first crime scene or you're going to sit there to see the um the, the, the kind of the the dialogue speech with um the penguin like it, it really i find like that was one thing when i went back and i've seen it a couple times and i kind of was knowing where the beats were yeah it really breaks up nicely for a long movie um i do feel like and we probably agree on this i do feel like the part where i check out the most is right at the end i do think the yeah. movie like the movie like when I start to kind of tune out and feel like I'm good is sort of like after he has his showdown with the Riddler in Arkham. Yeah. The last set piece is fun, but I'm not quite as invested. You know, like I said, the, the, the movie ends three or four times. Like, you know, I found myself kind of being like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm good. The movie's done in my mind. I already know what's going to happen. But like I said, I think it's one of those things where it's going to age really well. Like when people get to see this on HBO Max, I feel sorry for them if they didn't see it in a theater because it, it really is an amazing experience to watch it that way. Yeah. But it's something that I think people are going to parse, rewind, you know, break down, watch, talk about 10 minutes here, and it, it really holds up. Let me ask you this. Would this been dope if they ended it in that Arkham scene where what have you done? I argued for this in our yes, first discussion. Did. I argued yes, that did. for a movie that took a lot of risks, there was scope here to take the biggest cliffhanger risk of all, which was to, to end the movie with the conflict unresolved. Um, I actually thought it would, so I thought of the, the Arkham scene, I thought actually the cliffhanger spot that would have been a bold one to literally end it at Arkham. The other one I thought was when he pulls back the rug and you see the master plan, but you don't see how Batman is going to actually solve it. And so you kind of realize that like, we spent all this time chasing, the, kind of marching to the, to the tune of the Riddler. And there was this grander plan, which has now just been revealed, but is not yeah. going to be resolved until next time. I feel like, like I said, if this was television, I don't think there's any question that the season finale of a show like this would have been in that moment. Bad, of course, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're sort of agreeing that <clears throat> this movie ends up in a, around 800, 850. Well, maybe. I mean, yeah, look, I mean, again, I think it's a little bit of an asterisk because with with as we fear the covid lockdowns in china basically meant there is no china box office so you know batman accounted for 70 percent of all tickets sold in china on its opening weekends so you're like whoa that's great that's awesome there were no tickets to be sold it's basically going to be lucky to do about 30 40 million dollars total in yeah. china because theaters aren't open and people aren't able to go so this is this is going to solely be a, a non-china effort which, yeah, it looks like it's tracking into that 800 and 900 range, call it a little north of 400 US and about the same overseas, which, as we said, firmly profitable, awesome start for a first movie in the series. But yeah, with uh, the restrictions that wound up being there, it just didn't quite get to uh, maybe some of the numbers that we were thinking might have been possible out of the gate. Yeah. Brian, before we get into the news, 
I'd like to, at some point, we got to do it, man. Our top 10, because I've seen a lot of the Batman animated series episodes and I've rewatched them and I'm, I have a list oh, of man. my favorite. I'm getting caught up there. Okay. <laughs> I have while. a list of my <laughs> favorites. I have a list of my favorites. Let's do top five because there's a lot. I think there's a lot of episodes. Oh, yeah. Um, I think there's four seasons of, of, of the Batman. The and that was, yeah, and that was back when they were running the show. They were running the show daily at points, right? Yeah. It wasn't yeah. Weekly. Yeah. So I'd like to do that. Um, yeah, we got a lot of news. We got Spider, we got some Spider-Man 3 uh news, um, some more Star Wars news, Daredevil and the possible reboot. Not a season four, which most people were sort of hoping for, but I sort of doubted that we weren't gonna get this season four situation, even though it would have been dope because the guys at this season three were amazing. I would just get all those guys, hey, c- come back here. How much do you want? Um, we got some Blue Beetle update. This Madam Web situation is like, I don't get it. But let's see. Um, and I have, there's some interesting theories about Madam Web and what they're trying to do over at Sony. But we'll, we'll I'll, I'll talk about it um, when we get to that point. Um, some Doctor Strange 2 update, Avatar 2. Brian, you called it. We'll talk about that. Um, some Moon Knight. This uh, Godzilla versus uh, Kong uh sequel i mean it made money this was like the this movie was like the beginning of the the return back to the movie theaters um and we'll give you some black panther updates man uh some interesting things uh coming out of there and uh there's a lot of curiosity for that movie man there's a lot of curiosity and interest to see how this this movie uh does at the box office and how it's received um, first up, Spider-Man 3, Brian, after seeing No Way Home, we sort of agreed that one of the shining uh, stars of that film was Andrew Garfield. Willem Dafoe was some other, but Andrew Garfield stood out because he, that dude is a, I think he's a fantastic actor. And everybody loved him. And everybody's talking about, and I'm talking about everybody. This is one on one of these occasions where, you know, I usually say everybody, but not everybody feel, but everybody feels this the same way with regards to Andrew Garfield and his performance and wanting to see him back on the screen playing Spider-Man. There was a recent tweet from Sony. I didn't read too much into it, Brian. What did you think of their of their um uh I guess, update on that whole situation possibly happening or not. So to be clear, this is not the Spider-Man 3 from San Raimi. This is not yes. No Way Home, which is the most recent Spider-Man 3. This is amazing Spider-Man 3 that yes. the fans have been clamoring for uh, since Garfield's turn in No Way Home. So they've kind of been, I guess, tweet bombing the official social media feed of okay. Sony Pictures, which decided to respond Finally. and say, we heard you, we're aware of it, but haha, we're only the social media people, so we don't get to make that decision. Uh, obviously, Amy Pascal will probably be the one who finally, and Kevin Feige, but they'll probably be the two who actually pull the trigger on this if it actually happens. Mm-hmm. I think we're in the camp that it still does happen. Um, there's been enough smoke coming out of comments from Andrew Garfield, from Tobey Maguire. There's also, I think there's this deleted scene, which is going to be on the um, on Blu the video release, the Blu-rays, which is floating around that was cut from the theatrical, which their goodbye scene in the movie included some additional lines to the effect of, see you again soon and you know where to find me. So there were I think there's something afoot here and we're just, I think it's more Sony knows that I interpret the playfulness of the social media team as they were blessed to kind of 
respond to this from the yeah. higher ups. And that then starts the train toward, you know, when we get the announcement is not going to come until there's contracts in place, right? So like Garfield can say he's interested. Sony can say they're interested, but there's agents involved, right? They have to get pen to paper of like, okay, if we're going to do this, what, what does it mean? We don't even know like what options remained from his old contract. I assume those are done, but you never know. Um, and I think it's also a case of they're going to bring him back, but I don't think they're going to resurrect the whole necessarily the whole world that he was a part of. I think the interesting yeah. thing to do is to move forward yeah. what we saw in No Way Home. That's the character and the story people are responding to. It's not, hey, let's run it back <laughs> to where we were in 2014. I think that would be a mistake. So I still think yeah. it happens, but you know, maybe this was the first little inkling that the studio is at least acknowledging the groundswell for this. Twitter is a tool. Although they don't have the power to say, yeah, this is happening and nothing like that, they're just a social media, but Twitter is a tool, is a metric. It, can, it shows you what's trending, what people are talking about, what people want to see the most. And because the demand for this to happen is so great, Sony, I'm quite sure is, is paying attention and that usually equals if they're interested it usually equals to a dollar amount there, there's some money going to come in if they do something great with this and andrew yeah, garfield would only come back if it's something great so there's a win-win right there for both yeah that's why i i think this is one of those things where there's going to be a fair amount hashed out before they go public in the sense of like i think there'd even be some beats to a basic story they want to tell here are the comics that they want to draw from here's how we want to pull in the no way home angle I think a lot of that stuff is actually going to get hashed out before they go public with this. And look, at the end of the day, the, the biggest tell to me is Sony's commitment to the Spider-Verse. That is yeah. the library they have. You don't think they're going to pull every page and chapter they can out to make money? Come on, man. That's yeah. a no-brainer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, tell us what you think in the comment section below. What you think if this is going to happen? Do you think this is going to happen? Let us know in the comment section below. I think it's going to happen. Most people think this is going to happen. And this is this is just a no-brainer. If you, you do something great, you get Andrew Garfield to come in on board, even Tobey Maguire, people are going to come and show up. And if it's a great story, it's going to make money. Do you think uh, next, this happens before the next Tom Holland Spider-Man movie? Before or after? That's a tough one. And that assumes, by the way, that Holland would not be in this, which I guess we can't totally assume, but. Yeah. I would think it happens before, just to give Tom Holland a break, to settle his situation. Because he's going to demand quite a bit of time to get the, the numbers right, you know? I also think it's because I think the Garfield situation is like, you have to strike where the iron's hot. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Holland's, Holland's version has the staying power. You can let that marinate on the shelf for of a couple of years and people will show up. The Garfield thing, you gotta take, you gotta ride some momentum, I think, and yeah. build on that. Yeah, I agree. Um, Star Wars update. So, Damon Lindelof, right? He was the showrunner for 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 Lost, but Lost, and but, Watchmen. Yep. Watchmen to me, I I loved the show. I, that show was dope. That was really really well done. Um, and he is apparently rumored to be developing a Star Wars project. Brian. Your thoughts? I mean, that show Lost had a, had the problem of landing the plane, right? For most people. Um, what are your thoughts on this possibility of him uh, doing his own project? I still can't get a, you know, my biggest thing here is I, I still can't get a handle on things just seem to run differently in the Star Wars universe. Uh, I keep waiting for the moment where Kathy Kennedy, who's been re-upped, um, starts to move closer to the Marvel model. And it just hasn't happened yet. You know, so yeah. we had this, obviously, this Patty Jenkins Rogue Squadron movie, which kind of has run into some 
issues, it would seem like. Um, so we're not really sure where, where the status of that is. We have the Kevin Feige, Michael Waldron project, which is just sort of floating around, you know, we know it's something, we know it's a movie, I guess, but we don't totally know um, what, where that stands. Um, and then now we get word of this and yeah, it's, it's interesting in the sense of Lindelof, he's a very creative guy. Like, I don't think you could ever dispute him as like an ideas guy. Yeah. Um, you know, lost as an idea, the way it started, it meant a lot to a lot of people. You mentioned Watchmen. We didn't talk about The Leftovers. That was another sci-fi series that was pretty successful. Yeah, I heard about that regarded. In movie land, he's been a little more hit or miss. So it depends how you feel about the Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, Star Trek universe. That came in part from his pen. Um, Cowboys and Aliens with Harrison Ford and Daniel Craig. How do you feel about that as a sci-fi movie? Prometheus in the Alien universe. How do you feel about that? I think it's kind of polarizing. I actually think it's a little yeah. underrated, but there's a lot of yeah, people yeah. I like the, like I, 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 I like Prometheus. Yeah. So my point is, there's some inconsistent output when it comes to big budget feature film, um, and so I think it's an interesting choice. He's been better on TV, uh, and then we forgot um, Alias back in the day, the Jennifer Garner mm -hmm. TV show. I think it's one of one of his first projects. So as I said, in TV you see a lot of hits. In movies. You know, it's hit or miss. Hit or miss so I think yeah. it's, it's kind of interesting that they went with um, uh, a movie instead of a TV series. Although we'll see if that kind of winds up, you know, being something being something different in the end. Yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think. I mean, we have to also consider, Brian, um, for the Star Wars world. I don't. Correct me if I'm wrong. Are there any stories that uh, that are in the future after the Skywalker's, or is it just more prequel stuff? Um. Well, there is. I think it, the question is, are they going to go to right? There's the Timothy Zahn novels, kind of heir to the Empire, which are highly popular. Um, there's the whole host of books. The question is mm -hmm. like the Star Wars universe kind of ruled a lot of that as like non-canonical mm -hmm. in recent years. So I don't know like what's kosher for them to just mine and bring back. Like, we know that like some of the clues we've gotten in the TV universe, like um, Grand Admiral Th Thrawn was something that was built in the books yeah. after um, the Skywalker saga. So like clearly that character was deemed okay to import into you know the canon of the tv universe but yeah i don't know i mean lindelof also has not been typically a guy who adapts existing work he has typically been someone who creates from scratch watchman was a rare example where he did adapt but even in watchman he did take liberties with the right he took the concept in the world but it's not like he just lifted the character straight from the pages the way yeah. Zack snyder tried to do in the movie so he typically is a guy who wants a fair amount of latitude. So even yeah. in Star Trek, obviously he like changed the timeline, right? He basically tried to change the continuum as opposed to trying to totally remake yeah. the Shatner, you know, Nimoy universe. So yeah. I'd be surprised if he was like, hey, I've got a novel that I want to turn into a... Got it. So, I mean, a new Star Wars um, story is, is what I'd like to see. I want to see, you know... Life after um, we, what was the last movie? Well, Rise of Sky. Life after the Skywalkers, right? Yeah, Skywalkers. life. Yeah, life after the Skywalkers. I, I, I'm interested in seeing what the future holds for Star Wars. Yet, yet we're getting some prequels that it would, you know, Obi Wan, um, um, Andor, uh, and there's some others out there that 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 that, uh, that yeah, are based. Show, yeah, yeah, show, yeah. Yes, they, they have a lot of stuff coming out. Um, but for the movies, I want to see something in the future. Yeah, and they, I don't, I mean, people always show up for Star Wars, but they, they, they've, they've eroded a lot of the goodwill, I think, at least when it comes to movies. Like, I, you know, they, they need a hit. You know, yeah. that next movie, I think, give it, you know, there's a lot of sour, when you add up sort yeah, of, yeah, man. 
people feel a certain way about solo how people feel about last jedi heading into rise of skywalker like people are a little sour right now you need to you need to win them back like we yeah. you know we talk about we everyone gets on dc for like souring people on their characters in the universe but like let's be fair like star wars is really in the same boat like they gotta yeah. earn the trust back when it comes to big screen tv we have a lot of faith. We we can absorb Boba Fett now and be a little bit annoyed with it, but <laughs> it's fine because there's still great moments and there's great stuff around it. Movies, you know, it's it's a coin flip right now as to whether you're getting a good Star Wars movie when they announce it. Yeah. Next up, now we've heard a lot of things come out of the Daredevil situation over at uh, Marvel and what they're going to be doing with that character um there's been all sorts of whether he's gonna be in movies um will he pop up in movies will he do the series are they gonna reboot are they gonna continue on from season three which was fantastic again season three for me was like i can't believe they didn't win an award for that yeah that joint was dope yo and now we're getting that daredevil may be a his character may be a reboot. Brian, how do you feel about it? Because the way I feel about it is it was working. I believe that 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 Daredevil character in the Daredevil show. I, one of the scenes I keep watching over and over again, Brian, and pff, is when Punisher and Daredevil on the roof. Yep. I watch that over and over again. And these characters already loved as they are a world represented in the Netflix shows. For me, the kingpin that we saw in Hawkeye didn't live up to what I was used to seeing. Um, hope, but he was only there for a few episodes, so hopefully that could correct that. Um, but now we're talking about a Daredevil reboot, Brian. How do you feel about that? I feel fine about it for this reason, which is we remarked before that these shows were unique, especially Daredevil, in that Marvel was not inheriting something that was broken that they would be expected to improve upon in the way that a lot yeah. of the Fox properties they probably can't do much better than season one or season three of this show. They, they, so I think it's best if they don't try in a weird way. Like, I think if they were to just say like, hey, we're gonna use different staff and crew, but we're gonna have the, mostly the same cast and we're gonna just try to pick up where we left off in season four, I can almost guarantee that you and I would notice the difference in the way that yeah. we probably wouldn't like. Yeah. So I kind of feel like in that sense, reboot of some kind into one of Marvel's strengths, which is I do think Netflix, even though at the time used to say like, well, yeah, there's a maybe a little connectivity to the Avengers because they wanted the fumes of the popularity of that. They never had to conceive of Hell's Kitchen within the context of the entire MCU. Whereas we know that Marvel will. And so I think that's where the strength is gonna be that they they take and they're able to connect the streets around Daredevil's world to, you know, something as far away as the the, the streets in, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier, for example. That connectivity will make something a little bit different than we've seen. And I think hopefully that'll be pretty successful. I don't think you're gonna see Charlie Cox reinvent his performance as Matt Murdock. No, no. He doesn't have to. They're not gonna to touch no. that. They're gonna tell him you embody the character already. Um, but I also think like visually, it would be unwise for them to copy it. Like for example, I would be disappointed to see a single shot, 10 minute fight scene. Like that's been done. You yeah. can't beat what Netflix did with the oh, hallway yeah. fight or the stairwell fight. So don't bother yeah. trying to copycat that just to play the hits, you know? Yeah, you yeah. have to find a different action beats in your show. So I actually don't mind this just because I feel like, like I said, in some ways it respects season one and particularly season three is like this work of art that stands alone. And now we're going to just simply take the characters and we're going to 
start afresh. I think that's actually the right thing to do. Yeah, I, you know the the risk in that is that is not well received, and and they, sure. they 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 make a bad choice in how they want to uh, embody this character again. Um, but let's see, because it's a big big risk, and uh, we loved Daredevil and what they did over at Netflix, and hopefully they can um, reintroduce us to this character and and still have that magic. You know, I think the good news though is that, like, in contrast to say Batman, which I think is kind of appropriate to look at as an analog here, there's been so much more Batman product that's been put on TV and on the big screen that a lot of you know it's a rich text, but a lot of the most popular runs have been mined a couple of times already, like mm-hmm. Long Halloween, for example, has been used a couple of times. Daredevil has a very rich mythology, but it has only been on screen in a very limited fashion. So there's a mm. lot of white space and a lot of material that hasn't been pulled straight from the Marvel library that they can use to make sort of new stories with some of the same actors that we've seen. And I think that's the that's the hope here. Yeah. Um, one of the things, before we move on, one of the things that makes the multiverse so... Uh, intriguing is that you're given the ability to not necessarily do a story that's connected to the main MCU. Mm-hmm. You can possibly tell a story from a different multiverse, whatever. However they decide to do it, they have that 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 leeway to do a whole bunch of things. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if moving forward, we get some of these situations where these characters are not necessarily collect, co- um, connected to what what's happening in this MCU that we've seen for the past uh, 20 years or whatever, right? So that's that's a very interesting uh, situation that they're in right now. Um, next up, Blue Beetle. We got four more people joining the, the, the project. Um, the first person that was obviously cast is the, the, the main uh, star. Um, the guy from Cobra Kai, what's his name again? Jolo Maradona. Something like that. <laughs> um, and he's he's the obvious choice. So I'm really hoping and rooting for this project, Brian. Um, when do you think we get in this? Do you know when we're getting this? This And this is no. going to be supposedly on this- HBO Max, correct? Uh, movie on HBO Max. Although, remember, we heard a rumor they were thinking about moving it big screen. I'm, I think they will. I'm thinking it's headed to the big screen, and I, I think yeah. that this news we're going to talk about pushes us in that direction. Hell's yeah. Um. So, who are these uh, people that are joining the cast of uh, Blue Beetle, Brian? Well, I don't think George Lopez needs a lot of introduction. <laughs> <laughs> famous comedian uh, obviously he's these are all by the way i think believe i believe these are all going to be portraying members of the reyes family alongside okay. he's Dad. probably going to so be playing the pops uh well uncle rudy is officially who he's playing now they have ah, okay. they also have an, an academy award nominee and adriana barazza she's going to be playing i guess the aunt um okay and then a real sort of under the radar like name from the past, Elpedia Carrillo, who I know you have seen. You probably don't remember her name. She was the girl from Predator. A long time. Oh, wow. Ago. Wow. I saw the name okay. and I literally looked it up. I was like, I know I've seen that name, and I was like, yeah. So she was she was the girl that was rescued in the jungle in Predator in 1987. Wow. So she's part of the family as well uh, and damian alcazar is the fourth as well so these are all well-known uh latino performers surrounding um joel maradwena and that's why i say like this is this is swiftly becoming sort of a fairly acclaimed deep cast that i feel like yeah. you're almost kind of wasting if you leave them on just streaming and this is a film that in terms of representation um is going to deliver on that and I'm really, really looking forward to seeing this film, Brian, because it's, it, it, it takes us to another sort of culture uh, that we'll get to see on screen, hopefully. And I think, that, I think that'll be the point is to put this on display. We had a great showing, obviously, for Black Panther, which we'll talk about later. 
um, a Shang Chi, and this is going to possibly be uh, DC's uh, attempt at that. And I don't think it'll be um, put in the corner like Baby. Yeah, I agree. I also, I mean, it, it, this was a case. I think we agreed. This was one of the sleeper things at Fandom where they didn't obviously didn't have any footage. Yeah, we really liked the panel. You know, I think the the passion and sort of I was and how. Hell, Manuel Soto, I believe, is the director. Um, they they kind of walked through the history of the character as they saw it and kind of how they wanted to modernize it on film. They brought in Mara Duena to kind of talk about, you know, how he was thinking about things initially. And then they kind of gave you that sizzle shot of the suit, just concept art of the suit, which looked pretty good, quite honestly. Yeah. So I don't know, like... Anytime, I don't know, it's it's all early stuff, but like they seem to have a good feel for what they're doing. They're casting mm -hmm. really well. Um, so I think this is like, we're both pretty high. I think our expectations are very high that this is actually going to be a legitimate big hit when it arrives. I don't think the budget's going to be $200 million. I don't think it's that kind of project, but I think this is going to make a lot of money and be very yeah. popular and well-received. Yeah. 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 Let us know in the comment section below. Do you think this is going to be HBO Max or do you think he's going to go into the movie theaters? Let us know. Um, next up, Brian, I don't understand what this Madam Web thing is all about. Like, <laughs> I really like this is our version of Doctor Strange. Like, listen, again, I, if you've heard me say this before, um, I've seen Madam Web in Spider-Man series and she was a cool character, but nothing I, I, I would, I never said, I've never said in my life, I can't wait to see a Madam Web movie or a Madam Web animation show. I've, I, I, I wish and Madam Web has never been put together in my vocabulary when I speak. So this comes to me from out of left field. I don't know what this is going to be about. What I've heard, though, and, um, and and these are just theories that people are throwing out there, that Sony and Marvel are going to do something, something endgame like with the Spider-Man world. And this is just the beginning in, uh, of it, and it'll lead to some, something big. Brian, your thoughts? I don't get it either. I don't get the comparison. So, like, what does that mean? When, okay, so what, first off, what does that mean to you? Someone says... This is our universe's version of Doctor Strange. Based upon what we know about Doctor Strange right now, what does that actually mean to you? Like, what role is that supposed to be? A wizard. That's all I can, a sorcerer, someone who does, I, I don't know. Um, now, someone she's, that's supposed getting... to be, she's psychic, right? Part of her thing, part mm -hmm. of her deal is, right? She's kind of like a, for, like almost it's like super powered fortune teller. So yes. is that supposed to be like strange using the time stone to kind of see the future and end game and then he comes back and kind of gets, possibly is that what they're using as like a pair because like on the you're right when i first read like on the surface i was like that's like us going down to the playground and being like hey we have a really tall point guard he's our magic johnson <laughs> it don't make it magic shots. It just happens to be tall and he yeah, can dribble the yeah, ball. Like yeah. I, but then I was trying to come up with like, all right, what was that comment supposed to tell us? And I'm like, that's the only thing I could come up with is like there's a little bit of that future time jump type of DNA, but yeah. I mean, to do that, they've also Marvel's also set strange though with having him appear in all these other projects. Like he's now becoming almost I would say he's becoming almost more like Iron Man, right? Like he's connecting these other heroes and these other stories. That's possible we too. Haven't seen, we haven't seen Madame Web anywhere. So where is she gonna, is she gonna cameo in one of the, like is she in, like she, she's not gonna be in Morbius, but you know what I mean? Is she gonna yeah. pop up in Craven? Is she gonna pop up in these other places before we see her own movie? And that's what's gonna make us believe she's the Doctor Strange of of their world. I don't know. I, I think she will, be part of cutscenes. It makes sense for her to be part of cutscenes to deliver that 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 I guess um, uh, vision that she sees of the future and what these Spider Man from different universes will have to do in order to uh, defeat whatever threat that she foresees. 
that's the only thing that makes sense. We're going to see a movie and then she's going to pop up in all these other Spider-Man related films. Not necessarily Craven because uh, I've never really associated um, that uh, those characters together is always been with Spider-Man to talk to Spider-Man. Um, I know she has a connection with the Beyonder, but I don't know if they're going that that route. So th it, it, there's just a lot of questions to the the, the 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 purpose of this character and being introduced in this world. They also, I know they just recently added uh, Sydney Sweeney, who was like the star White Lotus, which obviously was a big hit TV show. So she's joined the cast, um, so she's sort of like a young. Right, like a young up and coming star. I think the other, look, I mean, the practicality of this is also that the Spider-Verse they set up with the characters they're featuring is an incredibly male dominated universe. And, yeah. you know, Marvel's, yeah, I think one of the things Marvel did pretty well in 2021 was beat up its female character lineup, right? I mean, with, but they've always had, you know, ScarJo playing Black Widow, and then we had Captain Marvel, and then we had Scarlet Witch, and. You know, now we've got new Black Widow, who seems even more awesome. We've got Haley Steinfeld. So I think Sony also realizes, like, they need to diversify the roster a little bit. And so I think this character in this movie, part of the suggestion may be, look, we need to make this character more central to more of the storylines, because otherwise we're going to kind of have, you know, a lot of white male guys <laughs> running yeah, around yeah. As, as our Spider-Verse. And so I think that may be a part of the, a part of the, Probably thrust here. Yeah, but. they 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 need a black cat and need a spider Gwen. They need they need those. Miles Morales, right? Like they need all that. So, yeah. So, let's see. Let's see what they give us. Um, speaking of Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange Two, man, we've said already that this movie is going to be huge. Um. And, and I read a recent article. I think the article that you sent me, Brian, um, that they've done. They've done some um, more recent reshoots, right? Um, Benedict Cumberbatch confirmed it. That he, yeah, he basically, he mentioned it in because he's he's stumping for awards for Power of the Dog, the Jane Campion movie that's up for Best Picture. And he mentioned he was still going back for more. I mean, it's March, man. But I know, right? Um, it'll be interesting if people are going to be looking out for those those edits. But listen, the excitement level for this movie is 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 going to get bigger and bigger. Um, I'm assuming we're and, and and there's been a lot of rumors about all these cameos happening. And this is something we've talked about quite often, Brian. This may or may not ruin the movie per se. I'm excited to see what they're able to do. I just hope that it ends there. You know what I'm saying? This is the opportunity to do it. Let's leave it here and not make this a necessary thing in order for you to get us to the films or to the theater. Uh, your thoughts? Well, first off, they uh, are calling their shot on box office, which is, I don't think I've ever heard a movie like do this. I mean, although I shouldn't say that. Rock called his shot with a billion dollars for Black Adam, but I think they said they're going, they said they think they can match No Way Home. Yeah, I'll take the under on that. I think this movie might Ooh. be like, <laughs> I mean, you, you Yo, gotta, you're gonna throw 800 million domestic and nearly 2 billion global as like your, oh, we, we got that. I'm like, really? That's, that's yeah. There's like four movies in history that ever got to that level. I mean, you're so. the way you're act, the way you're reacting to it is how people reacted to me when I was calling for the Batman to be 1.5 to 2 billion dollars. <laughs> I may have overshot for the first one, but for the second one, I'm still keeping those numbers. But so they, they went out public with that and they said, We've got something that we're, a we're aiming to deliver that kind of result and reaction. I was like, Oh man, okay, okay, wow, that's that's, that's putting it out there. The other thing is the I do think to your point about the cameos, there's a there's a whiff of the Mephisto and WandaVision hype train with this movie now. I don't know how you feel about this, but like 
the cameo the cameo rumor mill has gone to such a level like just google google do yourself a favor just google doctor strange to cameos there's talk of john krasinski as captain america there's talk of john krasinski as mr fantastic there's talk of tom cruise but seen as superior Iron Man. There's talk about real scene, Tom Cruise as superior Iron Man. Emily Blunt as Black Widow. Like the list is impossibly long. There's even a rumor out there now that like all of that stuff is true and that they cut four of the cameos, including Tom Cruise out of the final version, which I'm officially going to tell you that didn't happen because there ain't no <laughs> way that you Tom, Tom Cruise Tom let Cruise his out of a moment in nope. Iron Man suit be removed. That's not nope. happening. But it is so out of control that I almost feel like it's impossible for this movie now with its cameos to meet the expectations of the world. Because if it did, you just have two hours of cameos. Yeah. 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 Uh, listen, when that movie comes out, I'm staying away from social media the same way I did for the Batman, the same way. Well, probably the same way I did for the Batman, not for No Way Home. We already knew what was happening there. We knew for, for, for months what was happening with Spider-Man 3. But for Doctor Strange 2, is a, you you don't know what's gonna who, who's going to be in this. So it, it'll be best to avoid social media. But I'm excited for this, Brian. That 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 box office number, though, is, 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 is oof, that's crazy. I think it's, I think, I think it's, I think it has a realistic shot at a billion. Yeah. We talked about. Oh, yeah. Shot at like two billion. No, that's not, it's not going to be that. Even if it is a great film, which we want it to be, it's not a $2 billion movie. Um, but as you say, we forget about the cameos, people. I'm so excited to see Elizabeth Olsen turned loose as a good and bad version of herself. I'm so mm -hmm. excited to see Cumberbatch turned loose as Strange Supreme against mm -hmm. Doctor Strange. Like, um, you know, she would tell no one talking about Baron Mordo, but we know he's in the movie and he's he's always good in whatever he does. So there's so much in meat on the bone for the core characters. Like that's why I just say, like, if you're gonna do the cameos, short, sweet, have a little fun with it. But as you say, do not, I would argue, do not make those central to the progression of this film or where we go from here in the multiverse. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think are going to be cameos for this film. Just throw them out there. Just say who you think is for sure going to be in this cameo. People, listen, I think it's a given that we're going to see uh, Hugh Jackman Wolverine in this. It's possible. I think it's highly possible that we're going to see that. Um, and and it's just it's, it's just unbelievable, but let's see what happens there. Um, Avatar, Brian, you called it. You said that we were going to get possibly this uh, trailer for the first trailer for Avatar with Doctor Strange, and it is happening. We already got some news last week that we spoke about. Zoe sat down, seeing twenty minutes of the film, and um was overwhelmed emotionally by what she saw the hype train will begin dr strange when it comes when it comes out brian is let me ask you this how excited are you for avatar 2 and do you think it has a possible shot of getting close to what the first one did. <laughs> Since we were just talking about $2 billion movies, <laughs> there's the one that's out there at 2.7. Um, uh, oh, I mean, I would never underestimate James Cameron. I would be surprised. I think the culture around movies changes every time. But then again, I mean, this guy, I mean, was Titanic was, I mean, go back and look at the box office progression of Titanic. It is the most improbable of all, you'll never see a movie do that again. A movie yeah. that like basically made 30 million a week for like four months. <laughs> and then like literally didn't go down. It's just like yeah. every week it was like, it was never, it never had a week at a hundred, even close to a hundred million dollars. It was just like every week, repeat business, repeat business, repeat business. And then lo and behold, it winds up at $1.8 billion. Avatar was a little more front end loaded, but it was the same thing. The hold on this movie was just incredible. 
And that's how they got to $2.7 billion worldwide. I mean, I went back and started watching trailers for James Cameron movies because this was just, I was just curious. Not the best trailer guy for for a guy who's amazing as a filmmaker. The only, I would argue, the only like perfect teaser he ever did was Terminator 2. The very first teaser, which literally was a year out and they mm. just showed the manufacture of Arnold Schwarzenegger's T-800 and he ends with just, he just looks at the camera with his red eyes and says, I'll be back. That was the perfect tease for, for something that they didn't need to sell to the audience. I'm not expecting that, but I'm not expecting much. I think this is going to be short. I think it's going to be a lot of just showing you some panoramic shots of the underwater to kind of give you a sense of the visual appeal of this movie and then you might get like a a couple of zingers to get people talking i don't think he's going to want to give a lot away i think he's going to put a lot of faith in the brand that people are going to out of curiosity come christmas they're going to show up for this movie and keep showing up and keep coming back i think that's that's his bet that's been his formula two seven man that's be hard i mean basically you're asking me is this going to be the most popular movie of all time i'm going to say no but given his track record, oh man, I, I kind of feel like two billion. I kind of feel like two billion dollars is like what he's. That's his base. Yeah, I, I think he'd be like, I'm modestly disappointed if this is two <laughs> one. But I, I kind of think like it's safely one five, and it probably knowing him, he probably can get two billion out of it. Yeah, the, the thing about his movies, man, they're good date movies, and if you a player out there, <laughs> you take you going every weekend because that's a. His movies are good date movies. You know, um, you have fun watching True Lies. It's one of my favorite films. Avatar, yep. you can see that movie. That, that movie was Titanic an experience. Was the ultimate date movie, right? The ultimate block. Titanic, yeah. Date movie. yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he just makes those movies that you want to go back to the movie theaters and see him. So uh, let's see. Let's see what Avatar is capable of doing. Let us know in the comment section below. Do you think it'll hit the numbers Avatar 1 did? Um, Moon Knight season two. Well, the possibility already being spoken of, uh, season two. Um, Brian, we've already seen, um, trailers for Moon Knight and this is coming out in next week, right? March 30th, March 30th. Yeah. We're one week away. And the way people are talking about this show has me very, very excited uh, for that day to come. Um, what are your thoughts on this possibility? Because we already got an announcement that I, I don't think we're going to get a Waz- WandaVision uh, season two. Doesn't seem like it. If they do it, it's gonna, it's not going to be for a couple of years. Um, yeah. Well, look, I mean, the only precedent we have is they 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 gave Loki a season two before we saw season one, and that's been the best show by far. So the, it, it, if that's any indication, it probably bodes well. I must admit, I'm a little surprised. I mean, I didn't, mm-hmm. I never thought of Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke as being serial television guys. Yeah, yeah. So they must have really had a good time to be totally cool with coming back for more seasons of their characters. Although I guess I shouldn't say, well, Ethan Hawke is the one who said there's a season two, so I assume that means his character makes it out of season one. He, it may not. He probably, he probably may say just because Moon Knight was that dope, he's not surprised if we see a season two, but he may not be in it. I I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But the excitement is there for this show. I, I'm pretty sure people are going to be talking about this show every week. Um this is this is going to be very interesting to watch brian i wonder I think if it's also, I, yeah. I, I, I wonder if we're i wonder if we're going to have to put in our code to watch moon Knight. so i was just about to say that i don't think it's a coincidence that somehow the netflix shows ended up on disney plus two weeks before this is coming out i have to think there's a little bit of you know we're putting the more mature content that's already been out there on the service before we supposedly go darker than we've ever gone uh, with this series. I think that to me is the biggest question. I mean, they've got the cast, uh, they, you know, the look has been impressive from what we've seen. 
the question as always is how far from the Marvel formula are they going to be allowed to stay? Are they going to be allowed to push it, push it start to finish and not be pulled back to center? Loki was the only show that really kind of cast its path and played it all the way through and it was the best show every other show that season finale rolls around and like we're getting pulled back into the formula and you and i are sitting there disappointed the next week yeah, so yeah. We, we, i really want to see if this show's going to be gothic and going to be dark and going to be scary and who knows maybe even going to be tvma stay that way from start yeah, to finish yeah yeah That's, it's going to be very interesting i'm very excited for this uh, show to come out next week um and can't wait to discuss the first episode um Godzilla versus Khan sequel I thought it was over but I think they want their their uh chance at a at a fully reaping the rewards that they thought they should have had the first time around but because of the pandemic they didn't get uh they didn't reach those those heights um, and they feel like they can really make money off of this uh, sequel. I'm not, Brian. I'm I'm honestly don't care about the sequel. The I got what I needed to get from this. You know, um, how different will this be? What sort of weird scenario are they going to put him in? Uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? Well. I mean, if there was ever if there's ever a universe that showed there's no end to a character, it's been Godzilla, right? I mean, the history of that uh, coming out of Japan. I mean, how many movies have there been at this point? And they always find a new opponent and a new team up and a new challenge. Look, I Godzilla versus Kong was so silly, it was enjoyable, right? It was like the, the, some of the stuff that the, the, hu the human characters were doing in that movie, considering they actually they had real acting talent in that movie. Yeah. What they asked those people to do was so true. <laughs> but they were all having fun, you know, and, yeah. we got to, and we got to where we needed to get to, which was these, these two titans teaming up to take on Mechagodzilla. I have no problem with it. I mean, I think it's one of those things, it, it's a very big screen oriented type of show that that movie that we didn't really get to see on the big screen yeah in, you know i think my biggest question is who who is really left on the board of the classic mythology that they haven't gone to right like a lot of the lot baby of the, godzilla well i was gonna say that now see now you're going down the path of too silly right the creatures <laughs> yeah. become too silly yeah so i mean we did mecha godzilla we did Ghidorah, right i mean we did rodan like we did mothra like some so so a lot of the big name characters that the people would at least kind of offhand know they've already played so we know there's always other characters in the, in the Japanese movies they've introduced all sorts right there's Megalon there's a smog monster there's a sea monster there's Biolante but like to the U.S. audience they don't like they don't know who those those characters are so I, that's my struggle is like, like they've got to come up with a foil that is interesting to people but kind of known and I have no idea who that is, but I'm sure yeah. they'll find something. I'm sure they'll find somebody who's bigger and stronger and then the two of them put together and make it a challenge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was interested in the first one because I've never seen a modern take on this, right? Godzilla versus Kong. We've seen the old ones and, you know, it was what it was. And now we want to see what technology is able to do today, what this looks like on screen. And, and I saw it the first time around and I enjoyed it. Um, just for I didn't think any of the movies was bad, did you? I mean, yeah. you and I both like the second Godzilla movie a lot better than the critics did. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Godzilla movie. Yeah, well, look at, yeah, yeah. It's like, name me another Godzilla movie that was better than the second King of the Monsters. Name it. From back in the day. Yeah, it's not, it's not They didn't have a single movie that I would consider was bad. Like original Godzilla, yeah. King of the Monsters, Kong Skull Island, and Godzilla yeah. versus Kong. They didn't have like a a movie where you're like that's unwatchable they were all entertaining yeah yeah the one that's unwatchable is 1998 that's like what the hell when i was in the movie theaters i was like yo what the hell is this yo and then they have the audacity to make a cartoon out of this oh that's the, it was just I, I don't know but hey whatever um, let, us, let us know in the comments below what you guys think of uh, Godzilla. I saw that Kong movie Skull. opening weekend in the theater too. 
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, me too. Because I was a Godzilla fan, but when I saw what I was saying, I was like, "Yo, this dude is having babies now." Oh man, this is this is uh, it. Just looked like un- it was unwatchable. It was unwatchable, in, in my opinion. I, 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 every time if I see it on screen uh, on TV, I just like skip, you know, because it was just unwatchable to me. Um. Our last topic, very interesting topic to me always when we talk about Black Panther and the sequel to the, the first film. Um, there's a lot of curiosity, a lot of interest in this film. Angela Bassett just came out and said she expects this movie to top the first one. I guess in every regard, money, acceptance I'm not on that team just yet I am there's going to be a lot of interest yes excitement I don't know I'm not ex- I'm not terribly excited about this film Brian I'm a lot more curious than anything because I swear to this day, I, we still don't know what this movie's really about. We've heard some things, all oh, the, the Wakanda's the star, we're gonna highlight Wakanda. Um, and that's pretty much it. We've heard rumors that um, possible Submariner is gonna, you know, um, uh, be in this film as an antagonist but we still don't know what this movie's about Brian what do you think or or what do you have an idea of what this film may do at the box office um do you think do you agree with Angela Bassett is she if this movie's gonna top the first Black Panther your thoughts well, I, I think the so we we talked about you know we got the Avatar two trailer day, but let's talk about the trailers we don't have, right? The movies that we know are supposed to be coming. So there's Thor: Love and Thunder, right? No trailer for that. That's a July release. July release, four months out, no trailer. On Forever's November 11th release, so we got a little more time there. But I think it's interesting that there's been no rumors about either of those movies having a trailer attached to Doctor Strange. So they are doing an excellent job. I mean, what kind of forever benefits from this intrigue in a weird way? There's so much buzz about this movie without knowing anything. Like yeah, I said, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I am, I cannot believe there's been no leak about exactly who is holding the Black Panther mantle over the course of this movie yet. That, that strikes me as the kind of thing that almost always gets out, right? Because that's not a, you know, that's not Garfield and Maguire being on set for a couple of days and being hidden for shooting. That's like in the writer's room from the moment that Chadwick Boseman passed and they went back to the storyboard and tried to rework the story. Like whenever they hit on their answer to that, that information has been out there for, has existed for a long time. Nobody knows anything. Like it's all theories. Like I think it's going to do great box. I mean, I I've been debating whether it can top the first one only because I do feel like there is this that cultural significance of the first one and like being the first one of its kind really on that scale and then getting the Oscar nomination behind it added a layer of money to the box office take that the second one is not going to have. But I I think the second one's going to open bigger because people are just so fascinated with what they're going to do with the universe. And there's such trust in Kugler and Feige and the characters who are still living that we do know that like who's not showing up on November 11th to find out what they came up with. So I kind of feel like the most logical thing is you probably get the trailer with Thor that July to November, that's four months. That's probably where you see it. But 
when that trailer drops, we are going to go in knowing about as little, I feel like, about a Marvel film as we have in a while. Don't you think? Like, I feel like yeah. most of these movies, the rumor mill gives you, we have the clues, we have the, the toys, we have like leaks that like when we see the trailer is like, it's the visualization of what we've heard. Yeah. With this movie, we know nothing. Like we're going to look yeah. at the trailer and it's like all going to be new. Yeah. Kind of cool, but it's like I'm kind of with you. It's like I'm holding one level of excitement until I see that, and I'm like, yeah. "Ah, this is where we're this is where we're going." I, I know we've spoken about in the past um, about the recasting of the character, and they um, um, telling us that. They're not going to recast T'Challa, um, and you had said in a long time ago that they never said they weren't going to recast the character. They're just not going to recast him for Black Panther two. Correct. Well, that's what I said. Nate Moore obviously strengthened <laughs> strengthened the company line and saying there would never be an Earth six one six T'Challa ever again. Ever. He okay. Said, he didn't say for Black Panther two. I'm still in the camp that like, I don't think Nate Moore or anyone at the parliament will be the ultimate judge of that. I feel like the audience, the audience will ultimately be the one who decides. And I, I still think you and I agree that over a longer period of time, the audience will ask for this. And they will ask for it when they're ready and they want it. And at that moment, I think the studio will probably um, respond and, and, and recast the character. But the multiverse gives them an out if they decide not to 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 recast the T'Challa for Earth six one six, right? It does it does? So that possibly may be what they're going to do. Again, we've said what we said regarding um, their decision on not recasting. We hope they do um, for us, for me anyway, it doesn't make any sense not to. Um, I understand their immediate reaction to not wanting to recast because they will probably, um, you know, they had the privilege of spending a lot of time with Chadwick and him being, um, I've never met him, but he seemed like a wonderful human being. And to be around him, to see his work ethic, to for those who knew him personally and for those who knew what he was going through still was acting like, you know, I'm going to continue to do this, right? And, and was working throughout all that stuff. And they want to honor him, you know, by not... I'm not recasting, but I, we, we said already, and I, oh, I've said that, you know, listen, this has happened in the past and with, with actors passing away and you see the example of the Joker. Um, William Hurt. You know they're gonna recast these 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 characters to play them again, right? Um, and I think these a recognition too that the there has to be a recognition that the character, as it was created and as it was developed in the comics, the character has its own value and its own source of inspiration that yeah. in, a, in a way to not to to shelve the character forever one could argue is to do disservice to what the character is you know represents and what the actor who originally played the character represents well said bro. so i think the press tour for this movie is going to be fascinating because you yes. and i know that that question is going to be an every single junket and like take it from both sides let's just say for one second that the movie is a misfire 
you know the question is going to be asked. Yeah. It's like, you know, you know what would help Black Panther 3 is if you recast and re recentralize the universe around a new T'Challa. That will absolutely be a question if this movie, for whatever reason, is not well received. And if, if it's, it's not a awesome, question, Brian, Brian, if it's not a question, it's because they requested that those questions not be asked. Which is fair, which is fair. But this is why I think it's going to be interesting because you're, it's going to be an emotional press tour. So you're going to have a cast that, that lived this experience, worked with him, not knowing the pain that he was in, has had time to digest this, has had time to now shoot the next movie, and is going to face these questions. I find it hard to believe that, like, if you added up Angela Bassett, Winston Duke, you know, Letitia Wright, Peter Nyong'o, Ryan Coogler, I don't know that all of them, for all of the appearances they're going to make, are going to be content to just regurgitate company instruction not to talk about this. Yeah. Somebody is going to give a take, right? Like, we've heard, like, what was it, Ch Chadwick's brother, I think, didn't he say? Yeah, that yeah, like, yeah, he, he was actually yeah. saying he wished it was re Somebody along the way is go probably going to speak from the heart. And if they have a view, either way is going to give it in a public forum. And that's going to reignite the debate and bring it to the floor again. So I'm fascinated to see how it goes. But, you know, my, my bias is still that if this movie does what Angela Bassett says it does, says it will, I think it's going to actually help the healing process and it's going to push the audience toward wanting to draw it back in some form for Black yeah. Panther 3. That's my like feel for how this will go. And, it, yeah. and, when, and when that moment comes, it won't feel disrespectful. It will feel triumphant for whoever yeah. actually takes on that man. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree 100%. Yeah, man. Um, let's see, man. The curiosity is is a lot of curiosity for this film. Um, mixing with a little bit of excitement, yes, I have to admit, but the, my curiosity overwhelms um, uh, me with regards to what we will see for this film, what they got cooking, because we still don't smell it. We don't know what it is at all. And they've done a tremendous job of keeping that 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 information tight. So uh, let's see what happens. Um, let us on the comment section below. What do you guys think about this uh, whole conversation regarding the Black Panther? And will it um, surpass uh, or, or meet the the box office um, uh, that it did the first go around? Um, before we sign off. I know you. There's there's a lot of you guys out there that love Peacemaker. I I discovered a gem for you guys. If you want ridiculousness, there's this show called Guardians of Justice. The Guardians of Justice. This is a spoof on the Justice League, but they do so many things in so many styles on this show. Brian is crazy my only concern is that listen you do you cannot let your kids watch this because this is crazy this show is crazy brian you can certainly try to watch the first episode <laughs> and let me know what you think but i found it tough to keep on watching it that's how crazy it is um but yeah uh brian any last words um, no, just excited to get to Moon Knight. I feel like we had our little deep breath after the Batman. And yeah. now we dive back in. And it's going to heat up because you get Moon Knight, Morbius, and then Doc Strange is a couple weeks behind that. And then Obi-Wan and then Miss you know, and then Miss yeah. Marvel. And it's like Thor. Like, you know, this was our little break. Batman yeah, had yeah. the stage. This was one by itself. And now the year just takes off and it's going to be nonstop. Yeah. Um, that's our show for today. Please hit the like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell, uh, share it with your friends and comment in the comment section below what your thoughts on all this has going on in the superhero genre. And with that, um, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.